Ron, Jeremy. Pleasure to see you again, buddy. Pleasure, pleasure to see you, you again. Yeah, pleasure got, to see I got, you. I got a question for you. Yeah? Fire away. You're not ex-military. I'm not. What are you doing at Mission Motorsport event today? <laughs> Very good question. <laughs> Very good question. Well, yeah, you know about forces farming. I've told you a little bit about it. But basically, there's a huge gap in, let's say, people coming into the agricultural industry. And I think a big opportunity for people coming out of the forces to marry the two together. Um to offer a great place to work, great industry to work in. Um, and today's proven that completely. Why you, why, so you're, you've got a background in the corporate Farming. world? Uh, I'd say corporate agriculture. Okay. Yeah. And also hands-on farming. Yeah. 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 Uh, why, why, the, why the focus on veterans? So I was basically with a contractor, farm contractor, about a year and a half ago. And he he sat there. I went to his office one day. He had his head in his hands, and he he just had enough of the the job. He had about a hundred grand's worth of insurance claims, um, and that was all back to staff that had damaged property, hit cars, driven on people's lawns, damaged buildings. And I it just, it just came to me then. I just said to him, "Well, have you ever thought about recruiting anyone from from the forces, any ex military people?" And he said, "I hadn't hadn't even thought about it." Why did you think that? Um. I don't know. So I got a, a good friend of mine, one of my best friends from school. He was medically discharged back in 2016. Um, he came out of Afghanistan, quite injured, up and down, etc. Um, and and I just sort of ran it past him and just said to him, well, you know, have you ever thought about working in farming? And he said, you know, he's countryside based anyway. Um, and I just said, well, what about other people? Do you think there's a good opportunity for people coming out? And he sort of raved about the idea and said, yeah, definitely. Ran it past a couple of other people that are serving. Said, look, is there any, you know, options for someone coming out of the forces if they want to get into farming? Is there anyone that, you know, can help them along the way? And pretty much the answer was, well, no, there's no there's no link between the forces and farming. And if you look back through history, I mean, coming out of the forces, you know, people were sent to the countryside to take on a farm or a bit of land to, to work outside and work outdoors, basically. And... I, I honestly don't know why it came to me, but I just thought, well, it's it's a good match. There's a lot of transferable skills. There's a lot of opportunities for people who want to do something different, you know, want to work outdoors, want to have, a, let's say, a structured job, not work in the nine to five. You know, I, I spent nine and a half years. <coughs> I apologize, sorry. Um, I worked in, let's say, corporate, corporate world of agriculture for a big manufacturer for about nine and a half years. It was great, um, but... At the end, I realised as well, I don't want to be in an office. So I came back out, back to back to the UK from Germany. Um, pretty much started my career from from zero again. Because once you leave something, you know, it's hard to get back in where you sort of left. So I went back in about 20% of my salary driving tractors. And I, I just couldn't be happier. So it sounds weird, but I didn't didn't make the same sort of transition, obviously a transition as someone coming out of the military. But... Going out of a job that you'd done for ten years to go back to something that was in essence new again, um, you know, it just sort of reinforced the idea of actually this is you know you've got to do what you love. Yeah, there's similarities there definitely, and uh, um, uh, I, I've analy- an- 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 analogized it. An- an- analogized it. No, an- analogy. An- an- oh, there's an analogy. Analogized it. Yeah, I've analyzed. <laughs> It's been a long day, mate. I've analogized it yeah. in the past to, um, to a, uh, so exactly what you're talking about there, but I've analogized, said it, I said it then, yeah. uh, the military transition going from that to out of the military yeah. to someone um, uh, all of a sudden being out of the career they were in, yeah. city, into a different career, not having a career. Yeah. It's it is a it can be a catastrophic change of culture, yeah. especially when it, it's not chosen or forced upon you or oh, well yeah or you don't know what mm. you're going into it can mm. be catastrophic it's why people when they get made redundant yeah end up flipping top of themselves going down the pan nervous breakdowns that that's exactly what it is so i when i left the last company the, the career let's say the corporate world wasn't wasn't necessarily my choice it was my choice to leave but it was sort of a forced hand as in you're not doing that job anymore you're going to be doing this job for six months, and then six months became a year, and I just said, "You know what? It's not for me." Um, suffered quite a bit with mental health, honestly, in the past. Had um, burnout, depression, lost 
three stone in six months um, when I left the job. You know, a, a lot of things came up that, that perhaps needed to be sorted. And I realized that the only way I'm going to sort of fix this and sort myself out is go back to do something I enjoy. Um, so, yeah, yes, yeah, sort of made that same same thing. You know, left the job I thought was for life and, yeah, got back into farming. And it's something I'm passionate about. Um, and the other thing I, I worked in a lot was training. So I understand understood quite a bit about how to how to let's say how to put someone in an environment where they can learn, not to teach someone. Because it's different, you know, taking someone let's say our age and saying, right, you've got to learn a new skill. Actually, well, you have, but let's see what's the best environment to learn that in. Um, and that was really where sort of forces farming came from. The idea of well, market the industry to people leaving the forces during the transition phase. Phase. If it's a case of, well, I haven't got any experience. And then I, I spoke to a few people today, actually, and I said, well, you know, did you know what you were signing up for when you signed up? Well, yeah, I knew what I was going to do. You didn't know the ins and outs. And that's the same, I think, you know, people look at farming and go, well, I don't know farming. Well, no, but you know, you're growing crops, you're growing animals, or a little bit about the industry. Everyone needs to eat. So, it's, yeah, it can all be learned. It's one of the big, it's one of the biggest knowledge gaps with exponentially getting out. And I add it as well. So, um, I'm, I'm a symptom of that knowledge gap in the veteran mm. um, is they look at so man, you look at forces farming yeah. or you look at um, John Deere or something like that right and they think oh, and they think I'm not a farmer mm. and that's it that's just because when yeah. you look at farm well that's just farming I'm not a farmer I've got I can't drive a tractor or or I'm better than that because they assume it's a uh, you know really basic ground level thing with no no career path no yeah. promotion prospects no you know, yeah. none of that stuff in the same way they look at what I two years ago if you'd said to me you thought about working at Inmarsat which was my day job I would have gone I mean sat like communications company I would have gone I don't know comms I wasn't a signaler I was in I ain't got a clue so what mm-hmm. would I do there when the reality is same with farming agriculture mm. satellite communications where you have a mission motorsport, right? A mission yeah. automotive, the automotive industry. They're organisations which have, they have, yes, they have specialist roles, specialist jobs, mm. but they also have everything else in there. Everything else in there. And, exactly. Yeah. And, and all the skills that you have mm. from the military can apply into mm. farming, in which case yeah. what we're talking about now. Well, I had a chap today from the logistics corps come up to me and he, he hadn't even considered farming and I you know we chatted about it and told him about the forces farming concept and and he and I said to him you know what do you do now I'm in logistics and I said well God, logistics and farming you know it sounds silly but you pick a vegetable and that is already at the top the clock's ticking it needs to be at the supermarket as quick as possible like you know millions of tons of wheat going out of Southampton docks well that's got to be moved from A to B you know and doing it efficiently doing it properly shipping machines around the world you know it's, it's all it's all there and then you get into you know things like finance and Anything you know, customer support and so on and so forth. There's there's so many opportunities, and the idea of forces farming actually grew instead of just focusing on people working in farms. Well, let's build onto that and actually look at the whole industry. So then, um, got in contact with a few recruitment companies. One large recruit uh, recruiter for the probably one of the biggest in the agricultural market. Um, specific roles. So when once someone knows what they want to do and they've had a bit of experience, well then. Let's look at what opportunities are in a recruiter. Um, and another person that looks after the fresh produce sector, you know, talking to them and, and just saying, there's, is there an opportunity for people coming out of the, out the, out the forces? And actually, the, the, a couple of people have said, well, we're already employing people from the forces. So there is a link there, but it's just, I think, sort of marketing the idea that actually it's a good, good opportunity. Um, and, and some great chats today. I mean, it was fantastic. So talking to a couple of people, you know, about, um, I mentioned to you, you know, a lot of jobs in farming if you get onto a farm or a large estate well the job comes with a house so you take away that need that I forgot you mentioned I've, that yeah, yeah I've got to get a mortgage I've got to, I've got to have savings I've got to get a job to pay the mortgage I've got to do this I've got to do that well actually if there's an industry you know and if there's an industry that's already got an accommodation let's say fixed in with a job um, and then you add into that the elements of like you know banter having a laugh at people. if you're coming out of, a, of an environment where you think someone said to me today you know um, they were talking to a guy on a farm once. He, he had a farming background anyway. And he said to a chap, you know, he said, God, wait, wait, where did you learn to make those sort of comments? And he said, well, you know, I grew up on a farm. And he said, yeah, but I, I make the same comments and I, you know, I've served and you haven't seen what I've seen. Sort of <laughs> and he actually said to me, he said, that should be one of your main 
my, one of your main messages is, you know, well, you can carry on as you are. You can take the piss out of each other. You can have a laugh. You can, you can, you know, you can still be in the same sort of environment, but you're just driving different machines and doing a different job. Yeah. 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 I, man, I'd forgotten about the accommodation thing. Because mm. I remember, so you were saying, we were talking about that, didn't we? You were saying you can get, so one of the things is to make sure you get out, you need to go and find something to live, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And you were saying you can go on to a, st- you can go on to a state a lot of the time. Mm. You go and work in the state, it's a, whatever role you're doing in agriculture, mm. and as part of that job, you get you get a house as part of the job. Yeah. Mate, tell everyone that. I know, I know, you're exactly right. <laughs> Everyone's leaving the army. Yeah, exactly. And you can enjoy what you're doing, <laughs> you can work outside, you can, you know, be be on your own, or you can work with people. Because someone else said today, you know, yeah, but you're 16 hours in a tractor on your own. I said, like, yeah, you are, but you've got a radio. So, you know, you pick the radio up and say, you know, what's happening, what you're doing, etc. And you just chat. I worked with about eight blokes last year in during harvest, and I've never known band to like it. It didn't have the radio on because it was just all day back and forth, back and forth, taking the piss out of each other, having a laugh, you know. And it and I just sat and think, oh, I wish more people could do this. Yeah, honestly, yeah. it's just it's just a good good opportunity. And the way that agriculture is changing as well, you know. We I said to someone today, you know, we're going away from chasing sheep and planting seeds. There's there's genetics, there's logistics, there's drones, there's robots, there's autonomy. There's so much that's coming up as well and, and you know, imagery and the amount of people I spoke to today about, you know, LIDAR imagery and this, that and the other sort of thing. It's just it's just all, all transferable sort of to, to someone that's coming out and thinks, well, I don't know what to do. The last two guys today actually came over to me and said, um, we just want to stroke cows the rest of our lives. <laughs> what, what can we do? <laughs> so, all right, two engineers, one helicopter, one, you know, one yeah. uh, Air Force engineer. And I said, well, if you're interested in it, well, Come spend a day or come spend a week with someone working with cattle and see if you still like going home and smelling the shit. <laughs> but, you know, if you if you don't want a nine-to-five job and you want something that's re- rewarding, structured, um, but you can work in the elements, you know. And then the other side, the engineering side, you know, like I said to you, you know, it's it's a case of getting things done. Things go, everything breaks, things go wrong, but it's how you deal with it. And there's um, the company Agco who lent us a tractor today. Oh, Agco, you mentioned yeah. it before, yeah. You know, they've put on, um, they had a, they had a talk back in January that they're trying to recruit more people into the engineering side, into the sort of dealership for the, for supporting machines and fixing machines. And I went to them and said, look, I'm, I'm, you know, marketing the industry to people from the forces. Um, so they've actually come up and said, well, we'll do, um, we'll do an insight day on agricultural engineering in July, um, over in Warwick. Awesome. We'll give you a training center. We'll give you three instructors. We'll give you, you know, lunch, food, and we'll, we'll make quite a bit of an event of it. So, it, there's a really good, and that's the other thing. There's a really good reception in agriculture for people coming out of the forces. Um, and I had a long chat with someone today about trust. You know, trust in someone that's come out of the forces. Well, you, you know where you stand. You know that person's not going to let you down. You know that they're going to turn up on time. They're going to be reliable. And if you know you ask them to do something, they're generally going to do it or say, "I don't know. How, I don't know what I'm doing there. Can you show me?" But it's all about yeah, helping people develop and work their way through things. And, yeah, offer Mega a man. bloody good job. Mega. Yeah. And and you know, and there is a career progression there now. Um it the industry's changing, like I say, and it's such an exciting place to be. Um and then the other most important thing is of course we all need to eat. You know, Brexit, love it, hate it, whatever, we all need to eat. We all need to know where food's coming from. Um food security. You know, an old farmer said to me um a couple of weeks back when I was talking about this, he said, you know what, well, I'll be alright if the supermarket shelves go dry because I can grow my own food. I wish more people, you know, could do the same. Yeah. yeah. There's Mega Man. There's Mega Man. How can people follow what Forces Farming is doing? So at the moment, we're uh, pretty active on Instagram, at Forces Farming. Um, the website has, should be should have gone live today, um, forcesfarming.co.uk. I know, I need to check that as well. That should, <laughs> have a look back yeah, have a look now. Um, yeah, forcesfarming.co.uk, or if anyone wants to send me an email, it's jeremy at forcesfarming.co.uk. J E R E M Y. What is next on the horizon for you, mate? For Forces Farming. So we've got the the event in July. So planning for that. Yeah. Um, continue pretty much promoting the industry to people from the forces. So looking into various channels, whether that's doing a few articles in a couple of magazines, um, or um, dealing with everyone I spoke to today. To be honest with you, you know, I had about probably ten people left me their email address. Um, can you send us some more information? Going to contact you. Yep, send me your CV. Um, you know, we'll we'll see what comes next, basically. But start getting people into Insight Days, 
um, experience. If it's what you want to do, then let's start looking at training um, through different organisations and through different options, basically. So, and any any more events that come up like this, you know, I'm glad to attend. It's great. Yeah, really appreciate what they put on today. Yeah, it's good. Thank you, uh, Mission Motorsport, and James Cameron, all the rest of them. Thank you. Uh, brilliant, mate. Jeremy Gibbs, absolute pleasure. Good luck with it all, buddy. Thank you, Hugh. Appreciate that.